everybody. I'm Logan Gulliff, and I'm one of the most successful teen chefs in the world. I've written an award-winning cookbook, I've won MasterChef Junior, and I'm the youngest person to cook in the James Beard house. However, I'm not here to talk to you about food. Do I look like I'm in a kitchen? No. <laughs> so, I'm gonna help you forge your own mindset for success. Now, mindset is more than just a tool. It's a weapon, a sword with which you can cut down any obstacle or adversary. So let us start our journey up the metaphorical mountain to the just as metaphorical sky forge at the top. Are you a warrior? Do you have what it takes to complete this journey? The path of success is a long, tiresome odyssey wrought with setbacks and disappointments. It will take hard work and determination to climb the mountain. It will also take more than just hard work. You also have to believe in yourself. Believing that you can do it is the first step to achieving it. If you don't believe in your heart of hearts that you'll be successful and achieve your dreams, then you will always fall short. Success will also take something else. Success has a price, a price that is unavoidable. While I don't know how much success will cost for you, I can only tell you that I've paid countless hours, ideas, recipes, and painful failures. If you aren't willing to pay the price of success, then you have no business climbing the mountain with me. If you aren't a warrior, then you should just turn back now. We are at the wooded foothills of the mountain. This is where you must find your heart. It is hiding inside of a massive pine tree. And you must carve it out with these two tools. What drives you to be successful and why do you want success? I'm driven for success because I want to be great at everything I do. And I want success because it's the proof of greatness. Now you can have the fiercest drive, but that won't make you successful because your fire will extinguish quickly and you won't be able to forge a sword. So you must collect twigs and branches. You must collect supporters. Supporters are often the difference maker between success and failure. Every achievement I have has been built on a foundation of supporters. I wouldn't be who I am without every single person who believed in my dreams. Now, a fire also needs a starter. This is where you have to take that chip on your shoulder, it's a Dorito by the way, and use it to ignite the fire. Doritos are highly flammable, so you know, try that at home. Now, some people might have said, you know, you won't make it, you won't be successful. And if they haven't, and you're still at the very beginning of your journey, then I'll say it for them. You won't be successful. Wow, wow. See how that feels? Do you feel that bubbling anger deep inside you? I want you to find that feeling. I want, I want you to really grab it, really find it. And I want you to take that and I want you to set fire to everything stopping you from reaching your potential. Because, you know, I want you to prove me wrong. You can thank me later for giving you that little Dorito on your shoulder. Now a fire is nothing without the metal to smith with. So now it is time to mine the metal from within. These three questions should bring out your metal. How tough are you? When do you quit? And how resilient are you? Now, if you are weak, then you'll give up early. If you quit early, then your sword will be improperly forged and it will snap. If you aren't resilient, then you'll give up at the first taste of defeat and your blade will snap like a twig. But you might just surprise yourself with how strong you really are. There have been days when I've wanted to quit, times when challenges have seemed insurmountable, times when things have been rigged against me, times when, you know, I, I didn't believe. But that doesn't mean I gave up or accepted defeat. I never said I can't, and neither should you. Now, we have climbed to the top of the mountain. We are at the Sky Forge, and it's time to forge your sword. So, what kind of sword do you want to wield? What is your philosophy for success? I'll tell you mine. My philosophy is very simple. Strive for greatness. Very simple. I don't want people to say when they're tasting my food, oh, this tastes good. No, no, no. I want them to say, this is the best pork belly I've ever had. And that's my, that's my mindset. But you have to forge your own. And don't be afraid to call yourself successful even if you don't have the trappings of success. Even if you don't have, you know, if you aren't famous, if you don't make money doing something. Because I consider myself a very successful photographer even though 
I don't sell my shots, I don't display my shots, you know, it's only, only I see them. And only I see my definition of success. And that's the most important thing with your mindset for success, is it only has to work with your definition of success. Now, a sword is only as good as its wielder. This is where you have to take your sword and you have to practice with it, you have to use it. This is when you need to practice and hone in your style. If you want to be great at, you know, fashion, art, music, photography, cooking, science, sports, if you want to be great at any of that, you need to develop a certain style. Every great whatever you want to be had a specific style. Um, you also have to sharpen your sword with experiences. You know, contrary to popular opinion, Master Chef wasn't my first cooking competition. I already placed in three contests before I went on the show. Once you accumulate experiences, then your style will evolve and your skills will sharpen. Now, every warrior needs to learn respect and discipline, and you are no exception. Your mindset is an extension of yourself, it is a part of you. If you disrespect it, it will cut you. If you don't maintain it, it will rust. Your sword will always be a part of you. It will never separate from your grip. So you must get used to carrying it. Success is heavy from you know, the fear of having peaked to having a reputation to live up to. The more you have, the heavier it gets and the stronger you must become. You also have to learn discipline and controlling your blade. Sometimes you need to sheathe your sword around those who you don't want to get caught by jealousy. Your sheath can also protect your sword and your success from those who would steal it or tarnish it. And sometimes you should just hide your sword from people who, you know, you just can't trust around. Those are some difficult lessons that I've learned that have taken a lot and they're difficult. So I want to save you that pain. Now, it's finally time to cut down your atmosphere. And this is the most difficult part of being successful and it's the end of our journey together. Now, you have to take your sword. You have to feel it. You have to feel that hard work. You have to feel that polished shine with a sharp edge. And most importantly, most importantly, you have to feel how cold it is. You have to feel the cold ruthlessness ingrained in your blade. Now, what do I mean? Now, I might feel bad that I'm better at cooking pasta than the rest of my family, but that's something that I feel. My mindset doesn't feel that. My steel doesn't feel remorse. And sure, I do, but that's for me to bear, not for the blade. Now, it's not just the pain, but also the pride. Being other people can feel extremely good, and I'm very, very proud of my achievements. The sword doesn't own that success. I do. Now, you might think that other people are your greatest adversary, but they aren't. Your greatest adversary is always going to be yourself. That's because you are the one who will determine how successful you will be. You are the monster that lives in the closet. That's because you are the only one you can blame when things go wrong. You will forge your own success. Thank you for the time, and thank you to the Ornamental Mental Museum here in Memphis for hosting me in this amazing space.